May I have your attention, please? You are listening to the Big Cruise Podcast. You might know him as the host of Five Minute News, uh, a fantastic podcast and also a very engaging YouTube channel. But I know him as a, a very good friend of mine and a friend of cruising, Anthony Davis. Thank you so much for coming back on the podcast. Thank you, Chris. I have I enjoy watching your YouTube videos and listening to your podcast so much. And as I've said to you before, because like cruising is my dirty secret, <laughs> <laughs> um, and mainly you know transatlantic and Cunard and Cunard history. The, yeah. That when I come and do your podcast, I I really feel like this is I've made it. You know, I feel like I've made it. Oh, that that's you're very very complimentary because we, we you know listeners may remember from the last time we spoke but you and i first met when you were hosting a show on lbc 97.3 over in in london we were talking about the qe2 being potentially relocated to the london as a floating hotel and it was it was then just just from that interview that uh, we kind of discovered that both of us have this this deep interest not just in cruise ships but also in the heritage of the of the liners that came before them. That's right. And I first went on QE2 when I was six months old. And do you know, this is a very good story for you, because I've just I've just booked my maiden transatlantic crossing on Queen Anne, which means I will have done four maiden Cunard transatlantics come January next year. That's and amazing. I wanted to get my my status, my Cunard World Club status up. So I wrote to them and I said, you know, I went on it in 1975. <laughs> The QE2 when I was six months old. And I found, I went on the logs and I found the voyage to Tenerife and Madeira that this that oh, the QE2 wow. did from Southampton. And I sent them that. And I found the one that I went on in 1980, 1983, okay. where there was a massive storm and we were we were um moored off the off the Bay of Biscay in a force 12. And I remember windows smashing. So I sent them a link to that log as well, because I had photographs of both of these events of me on board. And so now I'm platinum on Cunard oh, Club, because yeah. they included my voyages from years ago as well. So I think you have quite to have good like seven or something. Yeah, they are good, aren't they? Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. And that that I mean, I think even now, um, so I've just been Queen Mary too, and Queen Victoria, doing the lecture uh, cruising, and it, even all these years later, the the audience turnout for the QE2 talk that I've got is nearly always the best turnout. And there's so yes. many people still cruising who have that you know 20, 30 year heritage with QE2 that was sort of their first introduction to being at sea. It's so interesting, isn't it? And I think it'll be the same with Queen Mary II in 20 or 30 years' time. Absolutely. That, that people will think of it as being that kind of heritage ship. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as you've said in your, in your recent YouTube videos, that, you know, maybe Carnival Line will get round to making another one. And it would be great if they do, because, you know, you've made so many videos of, is this the last great transatlantic liner? And it would be interesting if it wasn't. And and another one came mm. along, and I would love for there to be a two ship service like there used oh, to yes. be with Queen Elizabeth and Queen Mary, and just to know that they're crossing back and forth um, the whole time, like that that beautiful frieze on the wall in the in, in Queen Mary's dining room. That's what the other thing I should say is that now I because I live in Los Angeles, I live right near to the original Queen Mary of 1936, and I go visit her all the time. And so whenever I need a, 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 a cruise hit and I don't have time in my schedule or the money to book a trip, I just drive 45 minutes down the road and I go to arguably the greatest ocean liner ever built, which is being renovated and there's a new company running it now. It's making profit and it is looking fine. So, And you can even go, I think on, um, on the weekend evenings, mm. they, they have like a, a big band. And oh, you can actually go to the dining room and you can do proper dancing, like old school, proper Queen's room style dancing. Yeah. And a buffet lunch and everything and, and, and get that feeling that you might have got in the in the in the great hazy, lazy, crazy days of the past. So well, I feel quite we, blessed. When we last spoke, you actually were giving us a, an update on Queen Mary having just yeah. just been um reopened That's and right. it's it's so nice to hear that uh what's about six months later it sounds like she's she's actually doing quite well 
doing so well. And the company that have taken her over, they really have a great attention to detail. So some of the stuff, you know, outside the observation bar, they've taken away these screens that were there, you know, on the on the outside of the deck and replaced them with very kind of subtle glass. And they've taken the TVs out of the observation bar. I mean, you know, you wouldn't have had like sports bar TVs in that beautiful art deco bar normally. No, so the, and they've actually moved those to they've created a new room for people that want to watch the television, which I'm, I'm not in agreement with. But, you know, I understand that, you know, yeah. it is more. more well, Lisa it. keeps that authentic space. Yes. The observation bar, like feeling authentic. I think they've they've built that new bar out of a space in the funnel casing, I believe. Um, so that's it's right. Sort of an area that was never there. So I guess it keeps that the rest of the ship that's in its original, as much as close to original condition as it can be. It keeps that feeling like it would have done at the time. I've been watching a lot of YouTube video updates of Queen uh, QE2 in Dubai and Queen Mary in Long Beach. And it's now become a bit of a race between the two operators. Oh, yes. As yes. To who can kind of get it, you know, up and running and, and looking great. Uh, Queen Mary's opened 200 rooms now. And, you know, Queen QE2 is doing the similar style thing. They're renovating some rooms and closing off certain sections while yeah. they, you know, but they're doing a proper refit. Like they're, they've, they're bringing in carpenters and they're literally re rebuilding rooms within rooms. Uh, for the Dubai market, obviously, yeah. Because, you know, only in Dubai would people show up to a a ship from the sixties and be like, "This doesn't feel very modern." So, <laughs> well, you know, they're having well, to you, do it you up. Know, you're probably already aware, but um, Q QE2 is now for the last sort of year or so is under the um, operation of a core, and um, what I'm hearing is that they're they're being a lot more sort of sympathetic in terms of. The refurbishment work to not change the public rooms too much because when she first opened from 2018 to now we'll, we'll both know i think it's sort of a tragedy that the you know the coronia restaurant that, that which is the space where all of the royal engagements happened has now been turned into a business center and yes. the the library and bookshop which are just were the most remarkable treasure troves of maritime history are sort of um, waiting rooms conference rooms um, and so these little these little changes that were made here and there kind of took away some of what qe2 was but it sounds like now a, a cause really got an idea that the ship sort of soul is what's important about it and so whilst the cabins yes i think some of them need to be updated for a modern market you, you're not going to go into a into a ship these days and stay in twin twin beds and think this is a romantic getaway um but but at the same time you know those big public spaces the queen's room the 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 grand lounge the the restaurants they they are what had that feeling of qe2 that needs to be preserved i remember the double down room when i was nine years old you know i just remember it so well and because we were in this storm, I remember the ship listing and the whole band mm. sliding down yeah. this beautiful wooden <laughs> dance floor and ending up in a big pile and a, a crash of the cymbals, you know? I know. So I have vivid memories of that. But I would love to go to Dubai and visit her. And, um, you know, partly because I want to go see the Burj Khalifa and see, you know, QE2 at the same time. Mm. But w one thing that I think is interesting about these two renovations is that it's great that they have hotel groups that are running them. Both have hotel groups running them. Evolution Hospitality runs the, the Queen Mary. But the, the one thing that I've noticed is that that suffers is like, A, apparently the food's not great. You know, they do this Sunday brunch on Queen Mary and the food is like, it's not really something that you would look forward to. And it's very expensive. And I just do wish that they would open these places up like regular hotels where anybody can come in and yes. without having to have a reservation, you can just come in as if it's a hotel. You can have a glass of champagne or a cup of tea or scones or, you know, just something that makes it for everyone. Because, mm. you know, a little bit like churches, hotels are a sanctuary. Yeah. And they should be a space for, for all people to come and, you know, use the facilities and look around and maybe one day be able to stay in a hotel room. Uh, but you can't That's do really that if, like the Queen Mary, you're charging thirty dollars for parking and then twenty five dollars per person for entry. You know, it, it limits the the kind of people that can actually access it, and really, uh, it should be yeah. for everyone. I may be I may be mistaken now, but I do I do remember being told that Queen Kiwi Two, mm -hmm. you can you can go on board for for a meal. So the um they actually advertise the 
they used to advertise the Queen's Grill, but the Lido. And it's so funny. Um, apparently, a big buffet weekend meal is a is a popular thing for people who live in Dubai to do. So QE2, which is was renowned for for forty years of having the 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 grill, the princess grill, the queen's grill, these high dining experiences, is now its most popular thing is the big buffet in the Lido, which of course was <laughs> was where you'd go and get your breakfast on on QE2 if you didn't want to right. dress up, you know. <laughs> so it's but a you funny see... change. Both these countries in, in in America and Dubai, they're both very young countries. And so culturally, it is quite normal for them to buy in culture. And so, you know, the city of Long Beach bought in the the Queen Mary in what, nineteen sixty seven or sixty nine, brought it in because it was a cultural and historic you know, landmark and and Long Beach wasn't that old itself. (laughs) And now it's been in Long Beach for longer than it was in service on the sea. So you've actually, um, to to pivot a bit away from the the heritage of ships, you've just been on a few modern cruise ships. Um, The one I'm really interested to talk to you about is the celebrity eclipse voyage that you did, because uh, you've if you've listened to the podcast, you probably know it. last year I was on Celebrity Edge and was completely blown away by the Celebrity experience. It was quite remarkable. Um, and I'm, I'm very curious as to what your thoughts on, on Celebrity Eclipse was on, I think it was a Pacific coastal voyage that you did. That's right. Yeah. Was that your, when you did the Edge class, was that the first time you'd done Celebrity? Yes. So it was both first and and first on an Edge class ship as well. Right. Well, you see, you cannot compare an edge class ship with a solstice class ship, which the sure. Celebrity Eclipse is. They are they're they're of two completely different eras, you know. They're a similar size in terms of, you know, the the gross tonnage and everything. They're, they're, they're both, you know, mid-sized ships, I think you call them these days, which is ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's crazy, isn't it? isn't it? But you know, anything around a hundred to you know ninety through what one hundred and forty thousand seems to be a mid class ship. Yeah. But um, the the I've been on the Celebrity Beyond, which I did uh, in twenty twenty two, and and I having only sailed on Cunard really prior to that, the Celebrity Beyond, which is a little longer and taller than the mm-hmm. Celebrity Edge, mm-hmm. is was a completely life changing experience for me. I was like. This is how it has to be done. It felt so contemporary. Mm. They really made use of open spaces mm. and, and looking looking outside, which I think is also very important. A lot of modern cruise ship designs tend to just be like floating shopping malls. You yes, know, you yes. You get to see the sea. And so Celebrity Edge Class, I think, is – my mum calls it a cut above. And, in fact, she went on the Beyond after I recommended it. And in th- this year, she's already got two uh, Celebrity um, – What's she doing? So what's the one that came after the edge? The uh, Ascent and Apex? No, they're the bigger ones. Um, yeah, Apex. That was the Apex. second one. Second yeah, the one, second yeah. one. So she's got two Apexes this year. She's doing Norwegian Fjords and then she's doing another one. And she was like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What have I been doing wasting my time going on Royal Caribbean and all these others? <laughs> you know, she's like, it is a cut above. And it was genu- gen- genuinely the 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 beyond for my money was was fantastic and Mm. you know there is a bit of controversy about these infinite verandas which i'm sure you are aware of where absolutely the balcony is not on the outside it's on the inside and you press a button but you have to hold your finger on the button and it makes a lot of noise to open it yes and then the conditioning goes off and then it wakes up your partner and it's a whole thing right so I, i am Personally, I like to be in an ocean view, like down on deck three. Like for me, I want to what see. What a washing the over the window! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. the experience that I, I I enjoy, and or a traditional balcony. So if you do go on an edge class ship, they do have some traditional balconies at the forward and at the aft. Mm. Which, if you look at the superstructure, they have a like a, they look like a round balcony. Yes, yeah, like it's almost a porthole design, but it's not. That's yeah. right, but it's an actual balcony. It's not very deep. It's only about three feet deep, so you you can just about get a chair in there. But those are really the ones the the balconies that I would recommend, and not the infinite veranda, which might be a bit of a a bit of a bad move on behalf of of uh, celebrity because you know they've built what four ships now yeah. with this, you, you know with it's this interesting because I, I obviously looked at all the reviews on online and there's some some youtubers who who really go to town on these infinite verandas but yes on on my trip 
it, 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 you know, you do have to hold your finger down on the button. There's two spots. There's a spot up by the by the veranda, and you can also adjust it from from near the door, the main entry door. Right. And it is, it does make a noise, but neither of those things really bothered me at all. And the fact that you had that space that when it's when you're not out there, that was cabin space where you could literally you're not crawling around. That's the thing that I thought was so great about those rooms. And granted, we were on board on a media trip, so we were provided with a very nice room. It's not something that necessarily I'd be paying for. But, no. um, you know, you weren't having to sort of walk sideways to get between the bed and the and the furniture to get to the, <laughs> right. get to the balcony like you do on so many cruise ships yeah. where they are trying to keep everything so compact. And I tell you the one thing that just absolutely... I mean, it was just, I don't know, so, just a little thing, but it's so nice, is the bathroom in that cabin. It's a They're beautiful size shower. I'm, yes. I'm 198 centimeters tall. Like, I could stand up fully. I didn't have to duck. I didn't hit my head on anything. And the white marble effect. And yeah. also and a, a beautiful... Mirror. A beautiful photograph on the on the celebrity beyond it's of of a, of a beautiful African woman. Every every bathroom has the same picture mm. of of this mm. you know very intense woman looking at you through this through this picture. I I thought it was I thought the 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 edge class was absolutely stunning, and I would very much like to go on the ascent. Uh, mm. You know, always on the newest one, but not immediately. You know, you've got to wait six months for shakedown. That's the that's the other advice. But going back to your initial question. The celebrity eclipse is is solstice class. I think it was what the third or something of the, yeah, of the, yeah. the ships. And, and solstice class was revolutionary when they first came in. I mean, people were blown away by the on deck gardens and the, the the top deck design of the ship and the open openness yes. of that. Yes, yeah, I remember that. In fact, I was looking back through my photos, my online photos, and I saw that I'd screen grab pictures of the celebrity solstice when it was first announced, like twenty years ago, and the idea that it had grass growing on top yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. so exciting yeah this is amazing i had, anyway. I had a, um, a a family family member who um who knows obviously my my time that i have spent with cunard yeah. and they they booked it's probably 12 years ago now they booked um on on celebrity uh um i think it might have been equinox one of, one of the first of the of the edge class of the right. um, solstice class, right? Actually, it was it was solstice. It was solstice itself, celebrity it was, solstice. Solstice itself, because yeah. it was based in Australia. And um, the, we were talking about the, this upcoming cruise, and they just in, in passing made a comment of, you know, it'd be nice to do the luxury of of Cunard, but we're we're going to go celebrity. And I was like, pretty sure you're going to find that celebrity is extremely, <laughs> you know, it's extremely luxurious experience. Yes. And they came back and they've done multiple cruises on celebrity since because. You know, it, it is. It really is a, a step above what you well. They would they used to call them four star ships and five star ships, and then six star ships, right? So so those smaller ships are six star ships, but Cunard and Celebrity are considered five star ships, and then yeah. you know Caribbean yeah, yeah. is a is a four star ship along with Norwegian. So you know the thing about the the Eclipse and the Solstice class is that. You know, some of them. I think three of them have been renovated, and they've been, they've been, it, it, they've tried to do them a bit like edge class. But all they've really them, done yeah, is yeah, change, yeah. changed the carpets and, and and redone the bathrooms, like refabricated yeah. the bathrooms to have that kind of fake marble design. But the the celebrity eclipse hadn't had that yet. It was due to have it, but because of the pandemic, it ended up not because obviously the ships just were anchored yeah, for yeah, a, yeah, sure. Years. So it did feel a little tired in places, and and I had an ocean view room, uh, but I'd randomly, you know, I, I set it so that I was given a room as opposed to choosing a room, and I, but I was given a, a a disabled access room, which turned out to be over four hundred and fifty square feet. Really? <laughs> so okay. Yeah. It's gigantic. Yeah. 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 I was, you know, I was slightly worried that the toilet door was going to open when I was using it because things seemed to be like. The, <laughs> door was electronic but it, it was a huge room with with you know two giant windows so i was very happy and it was also on deck three you know not far from one of the atriums the only thing with the with the uh solstice class is that there's no real kind of center of the ship you know they have like two atriums and you know they have to one of the or both atriums they use for entertainment but there's no real good sight lines Right. So it's a little bit confusing. Whereas 
the edge class, you have this beautiful martini bar in the in the middle. Yes, uh, isn't and that amazing? View, yeah, right, so beautiful. Yeah. And then, of course, for the beyond, they moved the martini bar from the end into the middle, so yeah. that it really did become in in the round. And you have this stunning LED chandelier, and people can watch the entertainment from multiple levels. And the sound goes through the center of the show, and it really feels like a kind of central social yeah. hub. And you've got Cafe and, de Baccio up there as well. And one of the things I, I found about, I mean, again, it's, I've only had one on board, you know, voyage on Celebrity, but yes. the the whole team on board the ship just felt like they they really wanted the business. Like they they were there to be at their best. The, the martini bars you spoke about, it's like a vibrant place, but the bar staff are being entertaining. They don't just pump music in. They actually had a DJ throughout the day right just mixing music to the mood of yes. the room as more people came in it got more vibrant as less people came in it became a bit more soft and a bit more mellow but it's a human standing there doing it rather than just a pre-recorded track and there's all these little thoughts throughout the onboard experience that i found made me think that this is a cruise line that isn't taking anything for granted they really want to impress you so you come back and come back and come back whereas so many of the other Cruise lines, I think, post pandemic, I've just noticed that there's been sort of a toning down of a lot of the onboard experience. This one seems to have really ramped it up, and I was, I was yeah, very impressed. I, by I that. noticed that too. I, I think that they've really kind of used uh, audience uh, audience feedback. Listen to me, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> Passenger feedback to kind of get a sense of what people need. And so even things like the speakers being hidden in the columns in the martini bar area. Yeah. So that there's no kind of protrusions or things yeah. that you don't really need. It's all beautifully created and, and and stunningly designed. And then the other thing I should say about the Edge Class experience was the food. I mean, my goodness, the standard, the quality of the food compared to a, a you know regular main dining room experience. The fact that they've split it over four rooms, you know, four different dining rooms, each with a different theme, each with a very specialist but small menu. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, the Tuscan grill on the edge class ships, I mean, the, the pastas on there were incredible. And then you have to book Eden for a proper meal. You don't need to do the tasting menu. It's way too big. But just a, a regular a la carte meal is about, I think it's about $60 a head. But wasn't Eden an amazing space? Oh, like, what a great <laughs> idea. Such a great idea. And, you know, we, we watched them bring in a whole bunch of Nova Scotia lobster that was fresh and just mm. came on the ship and we got chatting to them while they were cutting it up. And we were like, we're having dinner tomorrow and I, he's, will the lobster be on? And they're like, oh, yes. And, and the <laughs> lobster casserole. Oh, my goodness. So you know, the, the, the food was, it really is a cut above. So I, I personally think that, yeah, if you're sailing celebrity, you really have to go edge class. I really wouldn't bother with Solstice class anymore. It's too dated unless they're prepared to renovate those ships up to the standard of the edge class, unless you get a great deal. I mean, the deal I got on the Celebrity Eclipse for a week was probably the cheapest cruise anybody has ever got. I think I paid $937 for two people for the whole week, right? Yeah, okay. Wow. <laughs> for 450 yeah, 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 yeah. square feet. I mean... That's it remarkable. was so cheap. And... I mean, I guess my my question on 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 that point you just made, yeah. If you were choosing between the celebrity ships, you'd obviously sounds like you would go edge class. But if you were choosing between the rest of the fleet and other options, would you still yes. recommend celebrity? Well, the problem is, you know, I live on the west coast, and there's no there's no edge class ships coming out of the west coast. So I would have to fly to Miami. Sure, and sure, sure, sure. you know. And and so that obviously you know increases the cost significantly. So when I went on the Beyond, I mean it was a thousand dollars just to get to the ship, and then once we got to the ship, it was an extra couple of thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So it's like half the price of the vacation is getting to the ship, uh, and I just don't think that's cost effective. You know, if you're if you're infinitely wealthy, then go for it. You know, but um, so I tend to really make full use of the ships that come out of Los Angeles, the San Pedro, you know, port of Long Beach. And um, in fact, the Navigator of the Seas, which is the ship I take my children on, and I'm about to again in a few weeks time, is such a fantastic ship. And that is a really old ship as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It got refurbished and yep. 
Uh, it, it's it's what 20 24 years old now it was built yeah, in so it's, 2000 so um it's, it's a previous boy, generation but they well i think that's the other thing is really interesting is that these refurbishments if they do a full scale refit you can yes. do amazing things because i think we the uh, had on norwegian spirit which is a 1998 built ship and, and she it's beautiful now dollars pumped into her and she's just remarkable and I was completely blown away by how they'd done that. Like the, the attention to detail, ripping out all of the interior of the cabins and rebuilding them, not just not just repainting them or touching them up or filling in chips and stuff, but like literally rebuilding them. And, and I, I remember I spoke to um, the, the the chairman of, uh, of, of um, Norwegian Cruise Line at the time and said like, it's a, you know, it's a ship built in 1998. You spent a hundred million dollars. Why? And he said the, the German engineering that came into this this platform, this ship, is so remarkable that she's she's just got life in her. And that is so reassuring to think about other ships like like Queen Mary too and other older ships that might be able to have this long extension of their lives because they're built so well to start with. It's very interesting, isn't it? To to it's a little bit like aircraft. You know, you can go on a really old plane, a 20-year-old plane. And it could have been refitted, which means a full new interior, including mm. the you know the sidings around the windows, and and the overhead compartments, and the and the, obviously the seats. And you wouldn't know that you were on a twenty or thirty year old plane, you know, apart yeah. from the noise, the noise and the smell. But I mean, you know, this is the advantage I think of of modern uh, engineering is that they are able to do these. Um, refurbishments at such a high standard yeah and so yeah so i have no qualms taking my kids on the navigator i actually think it's the best ship for families because it has water slides it has mini golf it has you know several pools and it's just the way it's laid out it, it's just so conducive to families and it also has a yeah. great kids club as well which is you know very yeah useful. yeah yeah absolutely so um you know, the only problem is they obviously ramp up the price in the in the in the school holidays, and so you know it, it's it's not a cheap trip. So we're we're only doing three nights as a family this time, but uh, still nice yeah, making the kids to, work for it. Yeah, it's about to go off to sea, and then I think you've also uh, mentioned that you went on the Discovery Princess, which is an, another yes. completely different style of, of of cruising to that celebrity experience we've been talking about. That's right. Discovery Princess is the newest, uh, well, prior to the Sun Princess, it was mm. the newest royal class ship from from Princess. It was, uh, it was cut. I think they cut the steel in February 2019, mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously again it sat pretty much idle during the pandemic, and then yes, yes, finally got used. So uh, you know, for me going on it in 2023, it was you know it was like a brand new ship, 145,000 yeah. gross tons. Um, it's a it's a beautiful ship, but this is the thing, Chris. Maybe you can answer this. It's like this is I think it's the fourth of that design for yeah. Princess, yeah. this royal class design. But of course, the royal class ship was designed, you know, like a couple of decades ago. So it, it it's you know why why build a ship in 2022 that has such an old design that when you're on it, it feels dated, even though it's brand new. It's that was how I felt it, about that ship. Yeah, and you think about also like um, the number of times that the Carnival Corporation, particularly, has used the same sort of platform across yeah. various brands. You do end up in a situation where the original design um, that has been created was created for a very different purpose to what it's being used for when it's being shared across the different different brands. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I think because the scale is so big now that we see with, you know, we see five, six, seven different types of ships with the same basic floor plan. But even if you look back to, and you'll know this more than more than most uh, with your history, in, in, a little interest in ocean liner history, but people people often say, oh, they're cookie cutter ships these days, but and look at wonderful ships like Titanic and its interiors, but it was virtually identical to Olympic, so yeah. much so that they didn't even need to take photographs of most of Titanic's interior spaces. They were that similar. Like I'm talking the same staircase, the same clock design, the same restaurant design. And then you have, you know, Cunard, for example, at the same time, Mauritania and Lusitania, same floor plan, vastly different interiors. And so that, that idea of reusing something that's worked is not a, 
it's not a new concept, I suppose. It's something that's been around for for quite a long time. But I guess with the scale of cruising now and the fact that you're building fleets of eight or nine of these same sorts of ships, you know, a really interesting example is the um, the fantasy class that that Carnival designed in the 1990s, and the last one of those um, entered service, I think, just just towards the end of the last um, century, and she's a very different ship to the the first one in terms of mechanics she has she had pods whilst the original had propellers but the actual you know they had very few balconies but they still use the same basic platform and that that always was a bit of a head scratcher as well as when you've got ships like carnival destiny coming in with hundred thousand gross tons and multiple multiple balconies and you have, have one just just a couple of years later that's still of that older that older design what what the thought process there was in terms of longevity of those ships but they endured until the pandemic so i guess there's something to it and people are going back on to older ships because they recognize that actually design wise some of the ships from from 20 or 30 years ago are are better you know and i'm i'm considering going on the um uh, celebrity summit because that's been sulcidized, not sulcidized, sorry, it's been edged up. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I want to go and I want to go and do um uh you know go up the up to Canada in, in mm. one of those ships mm. and, and really, you know, go go and see some glaciers. You know, I'm I, I, I want to use that ship for exploration. And yeah. you know, the reviews of that ship now are are fantastic considering that it has been refurbished because it has a real kind of classic ocean liner feel to it because it's that much older and i suppose that was really the biggest complaint and why i would never want to go on the oasis class because not only is it to me like a floating um shopping mall but you cannot see out and and it's all very well you know celebrating the fact that it's got a central park but you can't see any sky unless you look up through this like narrow slit in the middle. Exactly, that's just and, it, right? And 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 for me, cruising is about watching the sea, seeing the ocean, again being in an ocean view stateroom and having the water splash up against the glass. You know, I, I love all that. I, I really feel like it should be an adventure. And and I'm fa- I wanted to ask you because I have my um booking for queen anne for the maiden transatlantic mm. i wanted to know whether queen anne is reinforced <laughs> because, <laughs> you know there was there was talk you know years ago when queen victoria first appeared and they're like oh it's got a reinforced hull it'll be fine for a transatlantic crossing it's not really a cruise ship it's like a hybrid and then the same for queen elizabeth mm. but um i'm hoping it's the same for queen anne because you know the thing about doing maiden transatlantics and as i say i've done them all now on cunard uh, is that you're never really sure if you're going to make it or not because <laughs> the, ship, the ship has never done it before. And in fact, on the schedule, they don't always, I mean, with Queen Anne, they haven't set the arrival date. I mean, we think it's a certain date, but it could be a day earlier. So they've built in an extra day into the schedule just to, to make sure that the ship can actually cross the North Atlantic without any problems. Well, Anthony, um, we've got to take a very quick break but we'll come back after the break and talk all things queen anne and your future cruise plans lovely i can't wait so welcome back and uh we're here with anthony davis who's the host of five minute news a wonderful podcast as well as youtube channel but um as we've been discussing a a very big uh, fan of all things cruise but also very knowledgeable about the history of passenger ships and the cruise industry in general uh, and we've just been chatting about your upcoming voyage on Queen Anne, a transatlantic crossing. That's right. I was asking if you think it's going to make it. And, <laughs> you know, part of me doesn't want to know. And part of me, you know, just to kind of take the risk. And part of me is like, I really hope that thing gets across the ocean. Because, you know, um, part of my obsession with the with the transatlantic crossing, having done so many of them now, go, you know, dating back to the 80s, is that, the, the 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 ocean is so unpredictable chris as you full mm. well know mm. so and it doesn't with climate change it doesn't even seem to be seasonal anymore so it oh, used yeah. to be the case that you know if you went in november you know through january i mean forget it you were going to be seasick whatever happened but i think that it's quite changeable now and in fact i was watching a queen mary 2 youtube video 
earlier today of a, of a couple doing a transatlantic crossing where it was snowing mid-Atlantic to the extent that the whole of the deck of Queen Mary 2 was covered in thick snow and people yeah. were, were throwing snowballs at each other. And I mean, that's great, but it's also terrible in as much as, you know, that ocean is so treacherous and, and the, the Atlantic, the North Atlantic especially, is famous for being the, you know, the, the toughest crossing. And, yeah, it's interesting and so, how, yeah. how much things are changing around around the world as well. With, um, yeah. I mean, we did a November crossing back in 2019, and it went from I did a I did a daily vlog on the trip, and it was like, oh, it's very calm. The Atlantic's quite calm. To oh, it's getting a bit rough. To the rain is literally coming in horizontally at the moment. To a force twelve, which was. Re remarkable and I, I kicked myself because most of the worst weather was in the middle of the night I had an iPhone 7 or something you couldn't couldn't possibly capture how dramatic it was and I'm, I'm forever getting people telling me on on YouTube you never had a force 12 um but I, you know me and the other 2,000 people who are on board we, we will always know but <laughs> but but you know it, that and that ship was designed for that and she copes with it very well but she was moving and oh, yeah. and and then this recent trip we did um sailed out of uh chan may in in um in vietnam and the ship sails into a thick thick fog soup that was not expected it was just it just appeared and gosh it was eerie but um you know that there's a lot of net new sort of um considerations i guess that need to be taken when they're planning out voyages with the the changing climate around the world it's so interesting and it also means that you know different skills are required i mean look at this look at this runaway container ship in in, in baltimore in the u.s just oh, a, a few days saying. ago that, that took out an entire bridge and when there's a tragedy as in this case the, the loss of six lives but also you know what that's going to do to the supply chain in mm. the in the u.s mm. because you know long beach on the west coast has it is the largest container port in, in in the u.s but that that container port in baltimore it comes a close second yeah um, doing the other side of the country and you know really our needs you know our, our supply chain it's it, it's all down to these ships crossing in treacherous weather a lot of the time and yeah. I'm sure one of your favorite Instagram memes, or well, you're not on Instagram anymore, are you? But one of your favorite memes must be watching container ships losing their loads mid voyage. And I think that's the interesting thing as well, though, is like we we have it's sort of a balance, I suppose, between the, the changing nature of, uh, I guess, global transportation, but also the fact that we have so much more access to so many more ways to see things unfolding on a live environment yes. um there were you know countless absolutely countless sailing ships that just disappeared because of the weather and that's one of the reasons why people used to fear traveling because you weren't guaranteed to get there but there was no one filming these things happening so it was always a sort of lost at sea a mystery no one knew what happened now you you literally have cameras everywhere you can you, you know people are watching live around the world as as the tragedy unfolded in Baltimore with the bridge collapsing, people were um, watching, you know, on Instagram, these containers falling off the, the sides of ships, which is something that's happened since the 1970s when containerization became so popular. But I guess because we see it all, we have to be careful not to, not to, to feel as if it's all running away from us, but also to, yeah. to put the focus on the safety elements. I think there is in many respects, there's a, there's a difference between the, the approach that, Maybe not a difference, but when you think about environmental concerns, when you think about uh, crew and the way that training is done, the cruise lines themselves are more and more going down the the pathway of the of aviation, where you have crew resource or bridge resource management. There is a lot more focus now on sterile bridges during difficult point, points of um, of service. Uh, and but you know arrivals and departures you don't have visitors up there anymore like you used to in days gone by um, they they have a um, on many of the ships that I've been traveling on they have a, a system where a, a check crew member can oversee the operation and if someone's doing something that doesn't seem quite right regardless of rank they can intervene which is very similar to what airlines use to keep things safe on on, on flight decks um, and so there are big 
there's a lot of progress that's been made there when you think back to the days of ships like Titanic where perhaps the 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 uh, the emergency process was to 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 know where the T was you know <laughs> now it's uh, it's a lot more <laughs> yeah. um it's Keep a lot the band more playing. yeah exactly that sort of thing it would never would never come into it but then and then again you see things post pandemic um anthony I, I get concerned about is all the cruise lines moving to this sort of virtual muster system where you you That's go right. to your muster station. It does station. feel unsafe, doesn't it, Chris? The idea that you, you, you're kind of just going through the motions by watching the video on your phone, even before you get on the ship sometimes. Yeah. And and also, you know, the, the life jacket's not in the cabins anymore. They've moved those now to the muster stations or they're just out on, on deck. And so... The, the shift has changed to suit the passengers, I think, because they know that passengers hate doing the muster drill. And so they've tried to accommodate them. And the pandemic has been used as an excuse to some some of the lines have gone back to doing it the old fashioned kind of analog way. But many of them haven't. And I, and I do think about that. And I also do think about safety and security of passengers on board once the ship is at sea mm. and whose jurisdiction it falls under, you know, because yeah. there is no legal jurisdiction and everything is great on a cruise ship if things are going well. But if something goes wrong, seriously wrong, and I'm sure, and I know this is getting a little bit serious, but it is important that you have noticed that, sir, that, that the quality of what we used to be used to on cruise ships has gone down. Quality of food in the main dining rooms has gone down. You know, num like um, Royal Caribbean now not doing a, a turn down service, for example, like doing less and less and less, and yet prices going up and up and up. But I think and I've seen think that go on. across the whole spectrum. Like I don't know what it's like in the states, but here in in, in Australia, uh, and particularly post things opening up again, there seems to be yeah. this. There was a whole heap of things that were sort of curtailed from a customer experience point of view because of the impact of of covid but they haven't really been re restored and so we we see a lot of stuff here about you know complaints about our our airlines um, yes. there's obviously um considerations around multiple different forms of transportation but customer service just in terms of going out to restaurants and that and when you find one that still gives you good service man is that an amazing experience and when you yeah. have a delightful moment on on a you know for customer service person does what would have been back in the day the the baseline expectation but now is considered the delighter you just yes. feel like this is the way it should be this is the way things should be and you know what's really interesting is i've found that in certain places there's there's experiences that have been just so overwhelmingly positive which are coming from organizations that that have historically been sort of considered to be the ones that aren't the highest the highest almost luxurious service so Last year we we travelled on um on P and O cruises in Australia, which is a you know a casual, fun, um sort of chilled out brand of people just going for a party trip. But the the meal we had in Dragon Lady, which is they have these sort of extra restaurants, but you don't pay. Dragon Lady and Angelo's are the two sort of there's an uh, Asian theme and one's a Italian theme, but you don't pay extra for them. It's just alternatives to the main dining, and um this meal was just remarkable and it's hands down probably in the top three best meals I've ever had on a cruise ship. Yeah, that's so good. From P&O Australia, which, you know, is, is, is a wonderful brand, but is designed to be sort of very casual, very, very cheery. And it was just amazing. And everyone else seemed to be enjoying it too. And so those are the things that kind of really stick because it's like, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to be exceptional. And in a world where the brands where you are expecting it to be exceptional continually let you down, when it is actually exceptional, wow, do you remember it? And I've told everyone who would listen to me about it. And that's what I think the cruise lines are striving for, is to go above and beyond and for people to have great experiences. But because there are so many lines now and so many ships, there is this competition. So, you know, it wasn't like that years ago with, you know, Cunard and White Star. You didn't have much of a choice. But I think that that now it's like, what can we put on our ships that are going to get people on? So obviously Norwegian did the Speedway and and, and these you know this, these racing cars, and then water slides is a massive thing, and then slides that go off the side of the ship with a glass section of the you know a perspex section where you see the, and then like a walk thing where you're you know like Icon's got this walk thing, and I'm like my goodness, 
I don't want any of that on my ship. Like I really yeah. genuinely don't want any of that stuff. And that's why for somebody like me, but then again, you know, I'm, I'm nearly 50, but I, I am now starting to look back to these older ships yeah. and, you know, I really enjoyed the solstice class there, the celebrity eclipse. I, I really enjoyed it. The food in the main dining room was excellent. It was a very cheap cruise. One of the greatest experiences was sailing under the um, golden gate bridge in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was such a moving, emotional experience. Yeah. And it reminded me of going under the Ver the Verrazano Bridge in, in New York, you know, in on, on Queen Mary II on that fateful day in 2004, yeah. where, you know, we made history. And so I, I feel like, you know, you, you can find what it is that works for you and suits you. You know, I would never go on Royal Caribbean Navigator of the Seas if I wasn't taking my children. I just wouldn't mm. dream of it. Mm. I'm, I, I want to go on a ship and I don't like to join in with anything. I like to watch. I like to find a quiet place. You know, the best place is often in front of the gym. People don't realize this. You know, if the oh, gym's yeah, at the front the of the ship, yeah, yeah. go That's through the, the gym. Yeah. And there's a whole deck out front of the gym often in front of the running machines that no one really goes to. Exactly. And that was certainly the case on, on Celebrity Eclipse. Um, and I, I find that, you know, you can find your own little place of of peace and quiet and and just a a, a sanctuary space which mm. you know get yourself a pina colada <laughs> yeah. don't do the drinks package it's not worth it you've got to drink 13 drinks a day to make that cost effective you know yeah. no one should be drinking that much but that goes back to your point that the speedway on the norwegian bliss was not compatible with the drinks package Right, two completely incompatible products. When, when I went on Norwegian you. Spirit, I mean, it's it's an older design of ship, but it it doesn't have any of that sort of stuff. But yes, that's what that's one of the things I loved about it was the fact that it <laughs> exactly. was this sort of modern interior that they'd built into it with some elements that were original. But there's most of it had been redone, but the the platform itself, the actual. Leo class cruise ship is a 1998 design. It has the big boat deck. It has the she a, fo a false shear built into it. It has the, the top deck that's kind of designed around a, a pool area with some some seating areas as a basketball ring. It's got lots of open terraced aft decks, and it's like this interior is beautiful and it's modern, but the ship has the old elements. So I almost felt like it was a sweet spot for for a cruise ship, which was really nice. It's Anthony, interesting how the 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 um aft of the ships. The classic ships and certainly Queen Mary Two has these huge open teak decks with nothing on them. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. So much real estate, and it's so nice that there's nothing on them because if that was Royal Caribbean, it would have had so many activities and a carousel and a whole kind of chute mm. that you jump on and slide through. And there's these huge, like stepped open decks, and you feel like that is a space to just be at one with nature yeah. and, and and to listen to the sound of the ocean and of the wind and of the horn. And, and it's just, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, a lot of these ships now, a lot of these lines now, they just see real estate as revenue. Mm. So how can we upsell people? How can we, because the cruise price is, you know, they don't even think of that as the profit. The profit is all, what can we sell them? What, what can revenue, they buy in yeah. the shops? And, and, so I'm a terrible customer for for the cruise lines. I literally my game that I play is how little can I spend. <laughs> I think I bought my kids a little thing in Starbucks when I when I took them on the Navigator the last time. What do they call it? A po a, a a pop something. It's like a little. It's like a little cake. Oh, cake, cake pop. pop. Yeah, I bought them go. two cake pops. I think it cost me seven bucks in total. That was all I spent over the cruise fare for the entire trip with my children. Oh yeah, and you've got to be you a bit, you've got to be a bit careful when you're traveling internationally because, for us, we found I just recently done um, a voyage from from Honolulu uh, back down towards the South Pacific, and with the Australian dollar, but also with the prices of of things in the United States, well, particularly yeah. in Hawaii. I couldn't believe how much people are paying for for things like takeaway pizza or a Chick Fil A. It was just absolutely mind blowing. And then you get on the ships and everything's in in US dollars. Of course, yes. you have to be aware of that as an international traveler because you could get really, really smacked at the end if your currency conversion rate isn't possible, isn't favorable. So 
right. you know, there, there, there should be ways to be able to go cruising and not have to spend all the extras, which is the way I remember it back on, on QE2. There was no alternate dining restaurant. There was no, um, you know, pay extra for, for extra amenities. You booked your cruise. You had to pay your gratuity. There was drinks, of course, which you paid by the glass. And that was that. It was done. I don't really like this new ship within a ship concept that they that they're rolling out on a lot of lines now. I I, I find it uh, you know the retreat or whatever they call these places. You know, I find you know what it I think a little... of it as. Go on. Well, you know how back in the day there was first, second, and, and steerage, right? Like, well, I'm like... always in steerage, so I don't even I can't even look up there. You know, yeah, I'm more yeah, likely yeah. to have angels fly out of my ass than mix with the likes <laughs> of her. <laughs> the, the quote from a famous movie that we all love and <laughs> know and love but no that, right. that's the point i think is that um it, it's a it's a fancy marketing and public relations way of saying we now have two classes you you either yes and look i mean to a certain extent some some brands such as such as cunard you can argue had, had that with the grills a- anyway but the, there's more and more in some of these cruise lines now more and more amenities being reserved only for people who have paid the extra that it is literally two experiences and that's something that we used to pride ourselves in the modern cruise era that we don't have anymore. You can go anywhere yeah. on the ship. You might have your own restaurant. You it might have a little elated, lounge. That's about it. it. Yeah, it does a that's, bit, that's, yeah. Well, the other one is that the room service is completely. That's and, right. You pay. You now pay ten bucks a delivery charge on on many of the lines. Yeah, and that's that's, that's one of the funny things. Is I actually did a, a, a recording with a very good friend of mine who's done lots of Cunard cruising before, and he was on the same Queen Victoria trip that I was on and discovered for the first time in his cruising career that room service on the Cunard ships is free. And I heard that. He had a cheeseburger at one o'clock in the morning. He did. You listen to Luke. Yeah, there we go. So like, I mean, there that's something go. we've all us, you know, long-term Cunarders um, <laughs> have known for years, but he was like, why, where has this been all my life? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, you know, the, the secret, I think, if you want to pack in the calories is you pre-order a continental breakfast to the room and you start with that whilst you're waking up, you know, coffee and pastries. Then once you've got yourself together, you 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 trundle down to the main dining room for a proper breakfast yeah. because nobody wants to fight in the buffet for, you know, over wow. over bacon and hash browns. You know, you've got to have a civilized breakfast and and if you've got the time, and let's be honest, that's the best thing about being on a on a on a crossing especially is you've got all the time in the world, especially if you're going westbound. That you you just you know have a nice sit down breakfast, then you go and do an elevensies. You go and you know find yourself maybe some <laughs> sandwiches in the buffet. Go sit out the back and have a little cup of coffee or tea, and then you look at your watch. You're like, oh my goodness, it's it's twelve thirty. The main well, dining room must be open again. <laughs> I mean, well, I can put five thousand calories away a day easily, and yeah. you always have the conversation with people on day one. We're not doing the elevators. We're not doing the elevators. We're going to do the stairs. We're just doing the stairs. It means we can eat more. But halfway through the cruise, you've eaten so much, you can't get up the stairs. Yeah, yes, you exactly. have to go in the elevator. Uh, well, I guess in, in some respects, if the quality of food is d- decreasing, at least it will help our waistlines because you won't be tempted to go back over and over again. It, it, is a, it is a shame, though, that you are now being pushed towards the speciality dining because the main dining room isn't good enough. And in fact, let me tell you, on the Celebrity Eclipse, I did pay extra to go to the Tuscan Grill, which is a nice restaurant at the back. Mm. And the food was so abysmal and the experience was so poor that I ended up speaking to them and saying, look, I, I, you know, that was worse than main dining room, which we've been very happy with. And I got my 50 or $60 a head refunded and an apology from the maitre d'. And he looked at me and he went, yeah, I know. He, wow, he, yeah. He, he yeah, admitted yeah. that it wasn't very good, but that was because it was on an old ship, and all the all the budget now has gone on to the new ships. Yeah. So whichever the new ship is, the Ascent in this case, uh, you know, I think Excel is being built at the moment, but Ascent is getting all the budget right now. So you know, if you want to have a great experience, just go on the newest of the of the Edge class ships. Um, but really, it's so hard. Once a product like Edge Class has come out in the cruise industry, for those of us who don't want to go on floating theme parks, that really is the absolute perfect product for this moment in in history. And so, yeah, I, I would I wouldn't even bother with the two smaller ones, to be honest. The the Edge Edge and the Apex. I would go I'd go beyond Ascent or Excel when it launches, and I think that is almost worth flying to Miami for. 
well, I definitely would fly for an experience like I had on on Edge. And interestingly enough, we've kind of come full circle in our little chat today from celebrity to celebrity and with everything in between. But unfortunately, we, we've, we've kind of run out of time. It, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours, but w- would you be willing to come back and have a chat with us after your Queen Anne maiden voyage? Maybe that'd be lovely Are to you hear. you kidding me? Yeah, of course. Is. In fact, yeah. I think we should try and record it mid-Atlantic. Oh, that would and, be exciting. Uh, you can tell me how it's going. Wouldn't that be worth doing? Because <laughs> I'm definitely paying for the for the um, Elon Musk Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, that's well, changed I mean, everything, hasn't it? It means that we can officially retire onto ships and, and have Starlink so that we can basically work from our cabins and we never need to go into the office. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's, uh, you know, it, it, take, it takes the whole idea of the ship being a, a place where you can sort of be be there but also be in other places to a completely new new and yeah. i think the impact it makes for the crew who are away from their families is also very very positive to have um better connectivity uh, i do listen to star talk with neil degrasse tyson as one of my favorite podcasts and the impact that that these low earth orbit satellites are having on our ability to see the night sky is obviously something that is a, a problem and it bothers me a little bit to think about but um you can kind of see why people love it so much when when they can communicate. Yeah, it's all, you know, this is the modern ethical dilemma. It's like, you know, cruising is not environmentally friendly, and yet we justify it in our minds somehow. Mm. The same with flying, the same with these satellites, as you say, going into low Earth orbit. It's, you know, none of it is really great for the, for the, the, the true kind of human experience. But we have to qualify these things that we don't do them every day. We do them occasionally, and therefore, hopefully, it's okay. <laughs> you know, we just have it's, to just take it yeah. easy with the vacations already. It is one of those things where I think um, more and more, when I stand there on these these magnificent machines that I that I absolutely love, and I look up at the at the sky and see the smoke coming out of the funnel, and you know, you do think. Is this the right thing to be doing? So, and I don't think I'm. I don't think we're alone. I feel like there's no, a lot of people like that. I agree. I feel I like agree. there is a fu- there is a future, but they everybody, all of the transportation, but just globally as well, manufacturing everything just needs to move much quicker. And we need to start accepting that perhaps we won't be able to do everything we want to do at the at the drop of a hat if we want to try and save save the environment yeah. that we love so much. Yeah, well, I, I don't I don't really fly now unless I absolutely have to, and that's why I say I'm only really taking cruise ships from my home port because mm. i don't really want to you know do the do the extra flying and i and i am an environmentalist and so i do struggle with this interest in transportation it really is a is a is a conflict for me mm. so the way we can just make it work is by not overdoing it and and, yeah. and not traveling as much as we used to and using zoom for meetings rather than going and actually meeting people in person yeah but I think it's also important that whilst we, whilst there is a genuine problem, when we have the discourse, we we use reality and facts. I had a a recent um, comment on my YouTube channel about one of the ocean liners I was talking about, the, well, Queen Mary two actually, and the the commenter made a reference to the fact that it's ten thousand. 10,000, 10 million, I think it was, times more polluting than than a car. And if you actually do the math, it's not. It's not that I'm saying that it doesn't pollute. It's just that it, you know, we've got to look, we've got to use real numbers so that people don't go into these camps of, you know, of crazy sort of figures where you yes. can never find middle ground. And I, 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 linking back to your to your to your podcast, I suppose, as we, as we finish up here, that's one of the things that I think you do so well is that you bring some context to the the political stories that are happening and unfolding in the world at the moment, without so much of the uh, the the in, the incessant uh, exaggeration that happens. So, if people wanted to fi- to find you um, uh, online, wh- where can they do that? Uh, you can go to YouTube and type in Five Minute News, and you can support me on Patreon at Patreon.com/slash Five Minute News. And I also listen to you in the, on Apple Podcast. You've got a you've got the podcast there, and it's a it's a great uh, great listen on the way to work. So, <laughs> I appreciate everything you're doing, and thanks so much. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Until next time, bon voyage.